The augmentation index is a second very important parameter which is used to measure the arterial function, arterial stiffness. It has to be mentioned, however, that the augmentation index is an entirely different parameter as compared to the aortic pulse velocity. What is basically the augmentation index? If we take an arterial pulse pressure, this is systole, this is diastole, here we can see that there is a very nice uh, distinguished two signals and waves. This is first the direct wave, which is ejected by the left ventricle work, and then the second wave, its reflection. We can call it P1, pressure 1, and pressure 2 in the systole. Please take it into your mind that this is still inside the systole, that means the aorta, aortic wall is still open and the left ventricle is in contraction. And the formula of the augmentation index says that the AIX equal the P2 pressure, the reflected wave pressure amplitude, minus P1, the direct wave pressure amplitude, divided by the pulse pressure, which is the difference between the systolic and diastolic pressure, and multiply with 100. Obviously, in this case, because the P2 is lower than the P1, the AIX will be negative. If the P2 is getting to be increased, once it reaches the level of the P1, it will be zero, and then it will be positive. The aortic uh, augmentation index is very important, but all of the large arteries and the medium arteries in the upper body, we can measure the augmentation index. We can measure the augmentation index at the carotid side, in the brachial side or radial side. Definitely, the reflected wave energy is the major determinant of the augmentation index. How the augmentation index behaves and how the augmentation index changes in different kind of pathologies. The augmentation index is basically based on the peripheral vascular resistance at the upper body. If the peripheral, total peripheral resistance of the arteries and arterioles are high, in this case, towards to the periphery during the ejection and during the P1 action, just a small energy can be driven towards to the periphery, thus a large uh, part will increase to the reflection site, which is the area of the bifurcation, then a large energy will be reflected, so the P2 will be elevated. And then the augmentation index is high. In the contrary, when the vessels are dilated, mostly the small arteries and arterioles, in this case, the reflected wave amplitude will be much smaller, referring to the in, uh, dilated peripheral vascular resistance and dilated arterioles. This kind of augmentation index uh, change can happen very quickly. For instance, if you eat a normal food, after the 30 minutes of the food intake, there is a drop decrease in the augmentation index because of the visceral vasodilatation. On the contrary, if you smoke a cigar, the augmentation index is getting to be higher. Consequently, it is very, very important to standardize the measurement of the arterial function and the arterial parameters. Before of the examination, the patient has to be informed not to come in fasting situation. A small and gentle food could be taken two, three hours before of the examination. The patient cannot drink caffeine or cannot smoke three hours before of the examination. The patient cannot drink alcohol or two, 10 hours of the examination. And the patient cannot sleep and the patient cannot talk because all are influencing the augmentation index. Thus, if we follow the standardized situation, which is more or less similar to the blood pressure measurement, we could obtain a very, very nice parameter in the augmentation index 
that is a nice marker of the actual peripheral vascular resistance. Indeed, we made a nice study just recently at the University of Seged, Department of Intensive Care and Anesthesiology, and we made intra-arterial recording of the peripheral vascular resistance with a simultaneously measured arteriograph shown augmentation index. And then what we have found that during the anesthesia, the peripheral vascular resistance decreased with the intra-arterial measurement, and exactly the same was seen with the arteriograph measured augmentation index. And it is a clear evidence that the augmentation index is a good information about the actual vascular resistance in the upper body. The endothelial dysfunction, which is known to have the diminishment of the physiological nitric oxide synthesis, it is going together with the increased peripheral vascular resistance Consequently, measuring the augmentation index and measuring the peripheral vascular resistance, it is in relation to the development of the endothelial dysfunction. So in case of endothelial dysfunction, when the increased peripheral vascular resistance is existing, this measurement provides us information about the very early stage of the atherosclerosis, when only the small arteries are touched, and when the only small arteries are more constructed due to the missing nitric oxide synthesis.